Here we are back again, and it's Thursday morning. Uh, as you can see, the lathers, plasters, whatever you prefer, uh, are about done. They almost finished yesterday. They're ready. I mean, this can be inspected. The inspector will pass or deny this as it stands right now. I mean, based on their reputation and what he sees here. They check nailing. They check the way the paper's done. All that kind of stuff. Caulking around the outlets. You know, all that stuff that makes it waterproof or, or not waterproof. But it's ready. And electrically, I've got everything done inside. For, again, for inspection. All the rough in. You see the... The covers are on the boxes, finally. Okay. Um, the ones up high are done. Okay, you can see them all over there. Okay. And we got done with the floor. Looks nice and clean now. The paper's all retaped. The edges are not rolled up and show, you know, and exposing the concrete. <clears throat> Cable guys were here yesterday, you know, the, the uh, internet provider types, and they reconnected the, new, the cable to the new location coming down there. And then, obviously, if you remember, it goes underground, and it ends up back at the house over there where it used to be attached by overhead wires coming in right there. Eventually, that one will go away, too, when we uh, relocate that to the new end. All right, so what I'm working on today is... The remainder of the electrical back here at the house. I have to go. You remember I showed you the, the wiring going underground that's going to feed the house from the new service location. It eventually will come back to that box right there. Uh, it will go. I'll make another hole in this box right here and I'll run a conduit that extends that wire that we pulled you remember the red white black and green that we pulled underground will come back and end up in that box and it'll feed that switch right there which is a main breaker that turns off all the power to the house here's the last ground wire we pulled this goes through the wall right there in that in that Fitting right there, it goes through the wall into this box. From this box, it goes out the top and it has to work its way all the way up there to about 35 feet straight ahead to where the cold water comes into the building. And that why that green wire has to tie in within five feet of where the main valve is on that cold water. These guys, there's that black, white, red, and green I was telling you about. These guys are going to go up this conduit that I just started yesterday. You see it comes up here, and it ends right now, right there. Okay, so that has to continue through this area, through this maze. Come down here. Okay, on the right hand side of this right angle fitting, that's called an L, what would that be? LR, I think. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember the secret, how you tell it's an LR or an LL. One goes right and one goes left. Anyway, it's going to come down and right under that box, it's going to make a, a turn and go through the wall, you see where the light is over there? It's going to go through the wall and into the, that box I was just showing you. Okay, so I'm going to go work on that right now. and I'll try and show you what it looks like watching an electrician trying to bend that size pipe. All right. Okay, All right. so extending that conduit down here where I told you it needs to go. What I need to do next is make what's called a short 90 like this one you see how the 90 degree bend is right at the end of the piece of pipe i need to make one of those that'll that'll point down and that and put a little 
the beginning of a bend is called a kick. In other words, take the pipe and still in, instead of it being straight on the part that goes away from that 90, the, the leg of that bend, uh, I got to make a kick in it that moves the 90 over 8 and 3 eighths inches. So I'm going to go start doing that. Okay, is everybody ready? We're going to show you what it looks like when electrician tries to bend inch and a quarter EMT. EMT is electric metallic tubing. You ready? Here it goes. This is one case where the overweight electrician has an advantage. As you can see, bending this size conduit. It's not the easiest thing. You can't hardly pull on the handle. Because if you do, the bender comes up off the conduit and allows the conduit to kink because it comes out from between the two sides of the bender. And then once you get down there, Do that and you start all over. Ready? Here it goes. <clears throat> this is where you pull too much on the handle. I have to move out of whatever they call it, out of view. Hang on a second. Let's see if we can bring this the rest of the way up. Almost there. So, this is a square end. This end has never been cut. So, when that reads level, it means I have straight up pipe, 90 degrees. Not there yet. <clears throat> Getting close though. That's starting in the bubble. <clears throat> That's good. If anything, <clears throat> it's a touch over. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Floor isn't exact, exactly level, but that's close enough. You can see that's a pretty good looking 90. Nice radius, no kinks. Now I have to do this. Okay, like I said when I was under the house, from here to where I cut this off needs to be 31 inches and this needs to come up 8 and 3 eighths in that space within that space so I gotta raise this next to the possible expander it's too big Yes. Oh my. It's running right now. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. This is going to be tough. I screwed up. Started it the wrong way. Don't know if I can do this. Reverse this. Okay. Gotta go back to square one. All right, we got that reverse. 
first. See if I keep it square. No more. And about there, I'd say. bottom of the conduit up where it's sitting right on top of those blocks. It's eight and a half. Or that's eight and that's eight and a half. I'm looking for eight and three eighths, which is real close. Actually, I'm a little high. I'm a little bit high, but that's close. I'm probably eight and three quarters. I want eight and three eighths. All right, we're gonna cut off this tail and go see how that works. Okay. Here's the piece of conduit you just saw me make. It goes right from that coupling. Where is it? That coupling right there. Through the strut strap right there. There's the 90 down to the end of it right there. I moved that, that piece of strut I had to lower because it was right where the fitting, right where the coupling is going to be. I'm about to put the next piece on right now. All right, there's the next piece. Down and around, heading towards that service, that main disconnect. So now what I have to do, the last piece, I have to make an offset. It's kind of dark in here and I don't have a light. An offset that mimics that one to go into the box, up higher on the box. I'll show you what that looks like. I got the cover off. Here's where I'm working, inside of there. I lied, I don't have the cover off, but there's where it's got to go. You see where that wire with the white tape on it is landed? And the other wire with the white tape is landed? That little terminal strip has to get removed and relocated over to that side. So that will allow me to make a knockout where that terminal strip is and come right into the side of the box where that strip is with that conduit that I'm running right now. Those wires will come in and they'll land where you see the red one and the black one. And obviously the white one will go on the little terminal strip. The ones coming down now from the meter won't be there because the meter will be gone. The meter now is going to be on the back of the garage. Got it? Okay, there it is. And it's the middle conduit you're looking at that we just finished. Installing. Actually, it's not complete. The connector on the outside has to wait until I can make a new knockout. Like I said earlier. i show you what that looks like. There it is, it's the top one right there. See it? Not quite finished. Alright, so like I say, when I make a knockout, once I make a knockout on the side of that panel, I can push those wires in and make them up on the on the lugs, on the terminals. And that breaker will still turn the power on and off to the entire house. As well as one on the other on the back of the garage that'll do the same thing. Alright. See you later. Bye.